<laughs> More crazy people. <laughs> there they come. There's me. Right. Oh, right. I see that. Uh, but, yep. Okay. All there right. it is. Very nicely done. Well, you know, I think after the 10th, 11th show, we should probably get it right about now. Hey, man, <laughs> you have no idea when we first started, whatever, however oh long God. it was, man. We were. It was months. <laughs> it was months and months. And I, I, I still have things I, that I want to upgrade and change. It's just five the, days a week, too. Yeah, five <laughs> days a week. It's tough, but it's okay. It's, you know. How are right. you guys? We're good. We're good. Uh, did you have it was uh, Thanksgiving good? Everything was good. Thanksgiving was incredible, just incredible. You know, it, you know, the only problem with Thanksgiving, and I think for most all of us agree, it's just not long enough. That's the you know, it, it needs they need to make a Thanksgiving week. Uh, as in terms of what? Yeah, either. you know, we we we, we kind of already do that. <laughs> we, I mean, because I think we, I think we pretty much. We kind of slip through Monday into Tuesday, right. and then you know, and it's like, well, it's Tuesday, and um, it. But we timed it perfectly this year. This year, we had just she made perfect amounts of everything perfectly. Right, doesn't get better than that, and the the last serving of this and the last serving of that. If you were anal in such a way it's all gone not it... i saw that cake or the cake pie yeah, that thing. oh no that, did, that i don't think that made it through the weekend <laughs> <laughs> i that it certainly didn't make it to thanksgiving all it did was protected a couple of pies that it got in the way of <laughs> well i'll tell you i i'm really excited we got a, kind of a fun one um put together today for you guys. Yeah, about this one. I don't know why I've got, I'm all jazzed about this one, but I think you're going to like it. When I was um, a kid, I one of my absolute favorite, favorite songs was this one. Oh, wait, no. Yeah. Was Journey's um, Wheel in the Sky. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was so, I don't know what it was about it, but it just my mind really just spun on that song for so long. And I still, when I listen to it, there's just everything about it. I love it. And I think it boils down to the Zodiac concept, the wheel in the sky that surrounds us. Most people don't even know what it is. So when I talk to people a little bit about wheel in the sky, do they know what it is? Very few people really have a grasp of what it is and why and i've always loved space so this really kind of hit a real strong sweet spot for me and since 1978 i've i've been reading and studying about what some people say is an important thing in our lives and other people say it's the biggest a bunch of hocus pocus there ever could be and um in the meantime i thought we'd have some fun with it yeah, absolutely have some fun with it. The only time everybody's going to agree is when we're being invaded from space. Then everybody's yeah. going to need each other and, you know, but that that's, you know, that's okay. So the does the wheel in the sky refer to the 12 points of the zodiac? Is that what it is? Is that the wheel in the sky? That's the sum total basic yes, 100% answer. Okay. But but it gets a little more interesting um than that because every culture in history has studied the wheel in the sky. In fact, there are some that have really put a lot of forth effort into it. We're going to start with these guys, the Egyptians. This is an Egyptian star wheel that has all these different hieroglyphs that some people may be familiar with, some maybe not. But we're going to talk about a couple of, uh, you can see there's four diagonal points and there's four linear points that connect to it. And uh, those were actually akin to the wind, the four winds, north, south, east, west. But also the cardinal points throughout the skies, uh, there are four cardinal points that we 
north, south, east, and west align ourselves with. The Egyptians were really good about that. Um, they they loved, uh, they, they really were into that. In fact, this is another variation of a Egyptian sun wheel. Oh, hold on. Can you go to that CD right there? This is the greatest hits, Earth, Wind, and Fire. If you take a look at... Oh, yeah, yeah. They have all the different Zodiac breakdowns all the way through it that can be wow. found. Oh, there's the Ankh. Yeah. You got all our stuff is in there. And it really... Is that high, I see, too? Yes. So, you know, the Egyptians really, for the most part, we owe them a lot of the beginnings of this. But I've got to, I mean, I, okay, I try to wrap my head around this in the most literal way. I mean, I really try to, you know, right. I'm, I'm in Egypt, it's what, 4,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago? Give or take. And I'm walking around, how do I, how do, you know, it's not like I'm going to pop on down to the observatory. I mean, how do I even get keyed into this mindset that there's a cycle of anything besides morning and night. Yeah, well... That's a great question. I'm missing the whole class because I had to get Steve T. Oh. I don't know what's going on. What'd you say, Ray? <laughs> no, she said she, she doesn't going know on. what's going on. We're talking about the... the... I needed a cup of tea, so I have not been in here. Hi, Kobe. Uh, I'm oh, sorry. What kind of tea are you drinking? Uh, just um, chai, chai, you know, chai, decaf. I'm so glad that you. I'm so glad that you are here. Watch this. We have another uh, wheel in the sky that we're going to talk about from China. Ah. This is slightly different. Instead of it being twelve on the month, you know, each month having their own place in card, the in the Chinese zodiac, they have. Um, Oh, here. Okay. Um, they go by year. So if you are born in a particular year, that's the cycle that you go on. And they have, um, because their position is different to observe the stars and the coordinates, they have different stars that they observe. But what's interesting about many of their star constellations, many of them coincidentally match to others that are in our, when I say ours, I mean ones that we're familiar with as well. So it's fascinating that there is a coordination between some of them, even though they're very different. So they watch the, they watch the sky so much for so long that they figured out the rhythm of it? I mean, is that- That would be accurate. Well, you know, they didn't have TV. They didn't have TiVo. They didn't have Facebook. They had the stars to keep them company. Right, but they also and they also didn't have light pollution. Exactly, that was huge. In fact, today, if you know, if you live in a city like we do, you know, you go outside, you, you, there are only a handful of stars that you really can peer into, and planets that you can peer into. Um, but if you get a chance to ever be out in the wilderness or out where it counts in a, a high altitude. It's a different world. You know, I don't know if you've ever had the chance to, to see the Milky Way, but it's significant. I have. I have been in that situation. Uh, when we go to Sanibel, yeah. because there's no street. Yeah, lights. Sanibel has very little yeah. uh, light pollution. But yeah. You know. yeah. Well, that's really where I cut my teeth on, on on watching the stars. I used to just, just when I was a kid growing up there, that's what I did is I enjoyed watching stars a lot. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. I like it. So after the, uh, the one picture before you kind of which did, one? You, you, the picture before and yeah, that one. This Is one. That what you wanted? Did you want to talk about that or no? Well, the the twelve Egyptian astrology signs. You know, most people don't really think about the astrology kind of beginning, or I should say, having that connection, deep connection. Uh, to the Egyptians, but it really, it, I don't want to say it started with them because it really didn't. It started with the stars many eons before, 
And what's interesting is many people have talked about the Atlantean culture and the connection to them. Some people will look at me and think, Brad's a wacko, he believes in Atlantis, blah, blah, blah. Well, I hate to break it to you kids, there was a lot here before you and I were ever got here or, or our records. Around 9,000, around 9,500 years ago, there was a great flood. And that great flood increased about 250 feet of water in our, in our system that we have now. So when the waters were drawn lower, there were other civilizations. Some call it Lemura, some call it Atlantis, but it was an advanced culture. And there have been many uh, supportive documents that have even uh, supported this. In fact, ooh, I got a great book. Yeah, like Noah and the Ark. No, that's different. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> we have not a shortage of books. I know. <laughs> I've, I've, yeah, I've gotten quite a workout with this one. Graham Hancock, he's got this book called Underworld. And in that, he, he follows these megalithic blocks that are underneath this, that are underneath and right around what's called the Bimini Trail. And there are Wow. This is all shot underneath, and there are these massive megalithic blocks and structures underneath the water that point toward um, uh, Bermuda. And somewhere in between there, there is a theory that that is where it was located. So that, that just in case. That all tied in with the Bermuda Triangle and all that? Precisely. And um, so after Egypt, we have the Hebrews, the, the early Hebrews. And if you notice, this is a actual Zodiac wheel. And yeah. at the, if at, above each one of the Zodiac symbols that in Hebrew, you can see written around that. This is taken from about sixth century BC. So this is early Greek. In fact, at this time, Greeks and the Hebrews um, the Hellenistic Jews, they kind of got together and, and much of their philosophies, mathematics, sciences were exchanged between them. So there is a, an, an, an educational link between the two societies at that time. They influenced each other. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Worked quite a bit off of each other. Hmm. But, but, and I get that. I mean, I, I do get that, but it's, it's a lot of just walking down the dusty old Greek road and discovering <laughs> stuff. I mean, it sounds to me like a lot of this was learned or taught or somehow revealed. Um, I, and I'm not a, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, only, I know what something is. Uh, and if I don't know what it is, then I don't know what it is. I, you know, right. simple as that. But it seems to me that somebody told somebody something at some point. Well, so we're going to call it reoccurring miracles because at, over and over again, the story has been retold, suddenly different, unique to each culture. They all own their own. But at the same time, there are these golden threads that connect them together. And, and what has always fascinated to me is, number one, why? Number, number two, is there anything to it? Now, again, the scientific mind says, hokum, bullshit. But the, at some point, you will walk into the, I can't explain that zone. And once you walk into the, I can't explain it, it comes over and over again of things you cannot explain so easily. Well, this, I... I get that. I get that like all, all day vu? long. Deja vu? No, no, no. <laughs> like, like, uh, like the theory of if I had to describe something to you that I have never seen before in my life and tell you what it was, all I could use is my common frame of reference. Just you know, I wouldn't right, say right, it was right. a rocket ship. I would have no idea. Yes. So I like would... Nostradamus uh, was like talking about airplanes before there were even airplanes. You know, you know, all of that, I, I do agree. And, and in fact, I do have some, I have read much of Nostradamus's work. 
or I see a good deal of it. And within that, I, I stretch many times on the accuracies and reinterpretations, but there are some real golden nuggets in there too. Yeah. This, this is an image that I find to be fascinating. This is a Roman God called Helios. And the term halo comes from him. Oh. Uh, you notice above his head, there's a bright shining orb. Yeah. So is that the sun or? That's a very good, very good answer, young lady. Oh. This is him in stone. And this is around second century AD, early Roman era. Now, if you notice, I have a better picture now. If you notice in this one, there are four horses and you have Helios with the light shining behind him. The four horses are a big deal because it, around third century AD, there was another reoccurring miracle. Christianity was brought into the fold. And a lot of the data that was borrowed from one was taken and a place to another. The four horsemen have often been akin to this particular, because this is called a quadriga, the four horsed chariot, the four horses. And each one of those horses had their own significant meaning. I don't remember what they are. Give me some time, I'll recall. But the quadriga was very significant, and it meant that it was the power and personification of the philosophies of Rome. What does that have to do with the wheel in the sky? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. You don't, you don't think we're upsetting the NSA by talking about this stuff, do you? I, um, what? <laughs> um, by the end of this, by the end of this, yeah, by the end of this this uh, conversation. We may ruffle a feather or two, but all for fun and strictly educational and enjoyment purposes. We well, may be upsetting the NASA. Well, I'm going to be quoting the NA. I'm actually NASA. One, one thing at a time. Yeah, well, no, we're, we're building up to some fun here. <laughs> I'm having fun. Okay, yeah. My question was, what does this have to do with the wheel in the sky? I'm glad you asked. Now he says he's glad I asked. So we'll yeah. see. <laughs> okay. 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 So there is a very. Your picture is. Sorry, his photos. There we go. Yeah, there okay. we go. It's not turning. People should go online now, right? This is the time to do it. If they want to. If you want to go online, go to uh, Carmina. Car Carmina Barina. It's that very famous song that you've heard a billion times. That we're not allowed to. But you play. can hum a few bars. Oh my God. Come on, do it. You know, do, 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 boom, boom, do, 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 boom, boom, do, 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 do. If you ever heard that song or seen <laughs> any <laughs> type of horror movie, it's in it, okay? What? Is it like classical music? It yeah. is like classical music, it's but not, here's where it comes from. Like <laughs> but Carmina Burrito was originally written, well, actually was, was adapted to musical form as we hear it, as, as we poorly sang it. But people should go on their phones right now if they can and just like listen to it for a second to to remember to familiarize and themselves. it's extraordinarily heavy right and dark feeling and right big feeling and the song is called o fortuna meaning ode for tuna <laughs> o fortuna not tuna fish oh, but okay. like a fortune <laughs> like wheel of fortune <laughs> like the wheel of fortune there's lovely Vanna White since 1982. Oh, the wheel keeps on spinning there too. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. Right. And you know, it, the wheel of fortune is the elliptic, the ellipse. Here we go. Hold on. Oh, that looks uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Oh, believe me. So this is the original text of that song, O Fortuna, meaning the wheel of fortune. And how there is, you can see there is a woman centered in the middle of it. And there's a spoked wheel in the center. And that wheel that surrounds
is this. Oh, okay. That, okay. That's the wheel of fortune. Oh, here we go. That's the one I want. You see this right here? Right? This one here? Yep. Oh. Right there. That ellipse that surrounds us, that's us. And the, that wheel that surrounds us is the wheel of fortune, meaning the 12 zodiacs that influence our life, whether we realize it or not. This is what I study the stars with. No, there's a, there's, oh, that glares is horrible. Glare. Do not plan for this. Well, the, oh, I see. If you notice, like, if you ever take a look at the stars at night, especially off in the east, as as time goes on, you can see the stars. You know, if you go out there an hour from now, they're in a different position than they were because we're yeah. constantly in motion, and it's a constant that goes through. This. Thank you. This wheel of fortune was constantly being monitored, even during the 10th, 11th, and 13th century. And the reason why I'm specifically writing about, talking about the 13th century is there was a group of very educated scholars, Jesuits, around the 13th century. They, although they were scholars and they had been forced into celibacy and forced into a life of very um, religious ordered mentality. They really, this group really, the, the Gollards, they were called, were not wanting to participate as priests or, or in the clergy, but they had to participate because the church was ordering them to. So what they did was, is they wrote music and poems and satires, all in the ears and eyes of the church, but they would do certain things that were specific to let people know that they didn't agree with everything of the church. Mm. And that's where Brett, so that's where musicians got a bad rap, right? From the, that's exactly <laughs> these guys were the original rock stars because they real they traveled all throughout Europe. They did their shows and they talked about how, and again, the song is O Fortuna, meaning, and, and if, what's interesting is the, I was studying the lyrics translated from Latin to English. And what's interesting is if someone's bored, take a look at it, it's fascinating. Some of the lyrics are very similar to Wheel in the Sky uh. from Journey because we don't know what's gonna to happen tomorrow. We, we are absolutely, all of us, you, me, the king, the queen, it doesn't matter who. We all are faced with our fate. And our fate ultimately is we are going to die. What will happen to our soul, we don't know. That's what the fates have to, to allow us to, to, you know, judgment will happen then. So this song, was actually a big deal back then because it put priests and the clergy at the same place as you and me or anyone else. They were not above because, see, at this time, a lot of people don't know this, but here, this is really cool. Check this out. Oh, hell. Ah, yeah. Catholic cosmology, which most people are not familiar with, was a big deal. This is from one of the scripts of, of Catholicism. And if you notice, in the upper right-hand corner, I believe, we've got the big bear. Yep. Yep. And you can start picking out little stars on his body. Mm -hmm. And if you start following along, there, there are stars on all these guys. Yeah. And the big ship on the bottom is Noah, Noah's ship. Oh. And some of this starts to becoming clear. This dog. That's an eagle. In fact, I Did use that eagle. It is a shield breastplate. Oh. And some say that shield breastplate 
um, inspired the shield breastplate that was on uh, the, no, no, that was on, that's on our one dollar bill. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. So there is a lot of great data to What's be that found. Dog What's what? The dog called. I don't know. I can't remember. But you see that white dog, right? I do. All of, in fact, every just to let you know, every character that you see in there is written in the Bible. Wow. But you don't know about you who the dog is? Because it's going to keep her up all night. Uh, it, I if, Google it, it. <laughs> if it makes you feel better, it'll it'll keep me up all night, too. Oh, I can Google it. Oh, okay. Now, these oh, these poor people. Yeah, poor well, them. they're having it rough because they're on... Oh, sorry. What the hell? <laughs> sorry, I'm having technical... Sorry. No. So on this wheel of fortune, you can see you can see, you can see the there is a woman in the background. Yep. And you see there's a green clergyman in front. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is when things started to change because O Fortuna, she used to be all on her own. She never had any help from a guy. But in, in Catholicism, they did introduce the male figure, and that male figure was higher clergy, pope, or sub clerk, or cleric, somewhere up in the higher ends, as to be the intermediary between the stars and the people, because they needed someone to interpret it. And that's why, uh, in fact, over in, in Rome and in Vatican, there are to this day, incredible observatories, and they still utilize the observatories over there because these observatories were watching things in the stars. Mm -hmm. wow. You were on the sides. Who are that? You, you, you and me getting grabbed. There was just the garbage beaten out of you, basically, by the clergyman? Uh, no, by the Wheel of Fortune. Oh, okay. Are there, are there 12 spokes in that wheel? Yes. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, it's going away. <laughs> so here, here she is. Fortuna. Here, if you notice, if you notice up here, it says Fortuna. Up here, the V is actually a U, yeah. meaning the fortune. And there's a lot of little micro detail. There's a there's a there's a man up there being controlled by the wheel. And this is a six spoked wheel because they just chopped it in half for efficiency's sake. And then there's like, a, like she could crank. The right, wheel. exactly. There's a cranking of the wheel. So I guess if you're not good. You get the bad crank. Well, no, the, the, the wheel is always in motion. That's what it meant. Oh, sorry. There is a ship, if you notice, that there is a ship there. Yeah. Meaning that the wheel of fortune influences the waters and tide. And then if you see in the other side of the background, there is a, there's a town or a, a city. Yeah. Um, okay. And that means that, you know, old Fortuna influences that as well. By sea or land. By sea or land, right. Now, here are a couple of clips back to your NASA comment that I thought everyone would be found, find a little interesting. Cosmic rays from exploding stars affecting Earth's climate. NASA has been studying that increasingly because they're finding out that, hey, things on the outside do influence things on the inside. In fact, so much so that NASA has now selected a mission to study cosmic rays in the heliosphere. Back again with the heliosphere. Rob was very excited to tell me this this morning. I know, right? So this is very cool. A little scary, though, for us Earthlings. That's but right. Some uh, people would find it, you know. Not so scary. if you don't know what the heliosphere is, not everyone does, here we are. The sun is on one side. And then you can see Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, all the way. But then do you see the part where it goes from, there's like a line that separates our solar system to the rest where it says Oort cloud up in the upper right-hand upper right -hand side? Oh, maybe on his, it might be to the left. It's to the right. I'm not sure. Oh, it's on ours, it's to the yeah, right. Yeah, I see an Oort cloud. Right. So at the point of, we'll call it Neptune and Pluto area, that's where our solar system is done being protected by
by the heliosphere. Because past that line is wild gamma rays and cosmic rays that will absolutely shred any, any life that we know in, in apart. So close to Voyager 1, it put the, the market it, for Voyager 1. Exactly. So, in fact, so much so that, that NASA is sending out more testing equipment to that area where the heliosphere ends and the new, like where we cannot be protected by our sun any longer. And at that point, we're going to find out much information on how are we going to go past our solar system in the future. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're, we're not being protected by our sun or from our sun? I'm so the heliosphere, think of the, think of the radiant power of the sun. Yeah. Radiating so far past, it goes out to the edge of our solar system and then abruptly drop because the vacuum of the sun can no longer push outside the bubble of all of the other forces of the expanding space around it. It can't push back any longer and then it collapses. So it's like a bubble and that bubble is like a force field. Okay. I, and okay. that force field is protecting us from gamma radiation and other cosmic rays that we cannot handle. I get it. Mm -hmm. And so our sun is our protector. And it's interesting to me, here we are talking about the heliosphere. Here we've talked about helios and how it was our great protector and how we think we know so much, but we're learning every day more about where we live. Yeah. And that to me is very exciting because the fact is, you know, we, we live in, in really kind of an interesting time that we're seeing some of these observations starting to take place on what seemingly was, I don't want to say known, but definitely discussed about eons before they had a telescope. Yeah. As far as we know. Right. That whole thing just, you know, okay. I... It's, the dog star is serious. No, serious is the dog star, but that's not necessarily the dog that was in that and picture. And the constellation is called Canis Major, the greater dog. Yes, you're right. And, and you know what? And Sirius, is, it, the dog star is actually the eye of the dog star. There you go. So thank you very much. Yes, that's thank you. Help you sleep. <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt it. That's all very interesting. I, I, I um, you know, I since we, since we don't know so much about, you know, what's out there and all of that, I think that's what makes uh, being open to the possibilities of what could be out there. Uh, that's half the fun. Oh, I'm not yeah. knowing. Can you tell them the part about those, um, those? clergymen who, how they had the tunnels and oh, yeah. that's the best part. <laughs> so, so you remember when I was talking about um, these guys, um, you know, the, the rebels in the 13th century, the Gullards, uh, right. a little bit earlier ago? Yeah. When I was in Sweden some time ago and I was at a monastery and at this monastery, of course, they're huge and they have large grounds and, you know, it was all in, a, it was like an inclusive campus. And inside of the, the cathedral, they had a, um, a like a one eighth scale of all of the different grounds and the and the pictures of it. It was fascinating. And when they were talking to our group, I noticed that there was. Uh, they said that that this is where the men stayed, and this is where the women, you know, the nuns stayed. And I noticed that there was like a little dotted line on the grounds in between. I said, "What's that?" Because you know me, questions everywhere. I, they said, oh, well, that is where there was an underground tunnel that they would meet between each other. Oh, and, wow. I said, and I said, meet between them. So like what happened? And they said, well, a lot of illegitimate children took place then. Oh. And, and, in, and in doing so, a lot of the unborn children were actually buried outside the realm and it was a, it was a shame on on the monastery and it went for many years but 
the the gollards you know this is what they were poking at they were saying that you know you're like no you're like us you know you you have the craven desire you like you know you like to do what we like to do and you know and and it was kind of a, an interesting thought process that you know we normally don't talk about um but we kind of do because we know that not everyone is quote unquote perfect and that's one of the reasons why I love rock and roll so much, because let's face it, you grow up in a crowd of, you know, we're going to live our life and we're going to do it. Honestly, you may not like it, but we're going to live it. And well, that's, that seems to be the common thread that goes through all of this. It's not, it's, it's not necessarily rebellious, although it is, but it's um, individualistic and it's, yeah. yeah. It, you know, it's about my choices for me, and that's, you know, that's, I guess, you know, that's been the rock and roll uh, anthem, anthem yeah. uh, whatever, for, you know, since, since uh, well, since, since Angus, hey. That's right. Angus! What's hey. happening? Hey! How is everybody? We're doing good. good. How, how was, was your Thanksgiving? My, my Thanksgiving was great. Awesome. Uh, really, yes. Yeah, it, it was real good. Good. Best, best one I've had in about three years. Oh, I'm so oh, glad to hear that. Right. Yeah, we had a real turkey this time. Oh, they don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know the uh, the legend. No, of... I, know. I know. No, it's all that. Yeah, it's love turkey. <laughs> it was great. It was great. What happened to your snow and your Christmas lights, Steve? Fine. No. Mine? Oh, yeah, I got, I got, I couldn't be out there while Brad's doing his thing with this. Oh. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I like well, wait a second. Very festive. Next week, we're gonna get into some holiday stuff, okay. and 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 you know, we're gonna kick off a, a new segment. We're gonna be doing some birthstones, and the first one we're gonna do is probably the best rock and roll birthstone there is. That's true. Turquoise. Ah. That's a birthstone. Is that a January birthstone? No, December. 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 Well, there are again. There's a handful of birthstones for every month. We'll oh. get into that. So the oh. first, but, but yes, uh, turquoise will be that. Okay. Oh, that's excellent. That's well, great, we man. A lot about yeah. On the sky today. Yeah. And it keeps on turning. It does keep that's on right. turning. It does, just like the show. That's right. Well, I, you have to, at some point during this holiday season, I, I we need to investigate the Yule Lads. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because... Um, someone wrote, that was on our show wrote a book about them. Somebody that was on the show wrote a book in Iceland about the Yule Lads. Okay. And um, it's got to do with Christmas. It's got to do with Christmas, and if you're if you're bad, they do Aye. stuff to your shoes. It's like yeah. they it's, put potatoes in your shoes. Or it's wow. It, <laughs> it, so an old an old friend of mine that that watches the show said, you know, I looked into the evil lads because she was looking for something to share with her grandkids, grandkids. or whatever. Okay. And she, she said that would scare the hell out of those kids. <laughs> Oh, we're gonna do Yule lads. That will be, you know, what? we'll do Yule tide and all that stuff. All I've that great looking stuff. I've never heard of them before. Well, it's like you know a European. So thing. a Europe? No, I Iceland is. We're okay. It's an Icelandic thing. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's a Reykjavik. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. And watch out, it'll Reykjavik. Anyway. <laughs> So okay, well, listen. Are, do we? Is there more that we need to know about the sun and uh, heliosphere? I, I think that what we're going to say is we can always come back. But today, I hope you enjoyed. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I yeah. absolutely did. I absolutely did. Yeah. Very good. Very, very good. Yeah. Sue Vicente says that PBS has a Nova series on the universe. Totally cool info to add to this. There you go. Oh, you and you know, and you know that Jimi Hendrix referred. He wrote Third Stone from the Sun" about the planet Earth being the third stone from the yeah. sun. Thank and, you for bringing that up. And, and I'll leave you with one tidbit: the ohm is the vibration of the sun. Oh, the vibration. We'll get into that. Okay. Anytime. I'd like that. All right. Let's look for 
Angus. Do all right, all right, yeah. Well, Angus, Angus. Angus. Do your Take best. care, guys. Take guys. Bye, it's good to see you again. Good to see you. <laughs> see you next week. Love you guys. Love you too, Love man. You too, guys. Love you too. Wow. Uh, be funny. Okay, Angus. Good stuff. I don't have any Christmas stuff yet.